Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is August 21st, 2022, and this is episode 534, I believe. Today we're looking at Astro City. That was then. This is uh, comes out from Image Comics at $3.99. This actually came out, I believe, last month. Uh, issue 2 is out. This is issue 1. And as a, I did a little bit of research on Astro City as this is kind of a relaunch of Astro City. I think it started way back, I want to say like 1995, and then there were many editions of it. It moved from, oh boy, Image Comics to Homage Comics to Wildstorm to DC to Vertigo. And then it stopped publishing, I think, around 2005, 2010, something like that. Now, this is not like a sequel so much as it seems to be kind of a, a re revamp. I did look at the original characters that were in Astro City, and it appears that there's only one right now that is returning, and that is the Sumerian. Um, and let's take a quick look. This is a recommend. The story here isn't too much of a story it's just kind of a telling of where people are at it's kind of a setup issue i believe issue two is already out at the store i'm be picking that up i believe this week if i get a chance and let's take a quick look at who worked on this this has got an all-star cast by the way we've got kurt busiak as the writer brent eric anderson is the artist alex ross did the cover and is also the character designer. Alex Sinclair is the colorist. And Comic Craft, Tyler Smith and Jimmy Bentoncourt did the lettering and design. The editor is Kel Simons. And there you go. And there's some variant covers down here. Take a look at that. Soak all that in. So... The first page turns out, and I think there's a, a printing issue with this, because I was trying to figure out if that was part of the story or not, this kind of weird thing. But if you look at the bubbles, they're kind of drawn that way. Um, I think just this first page got kind of a weird, weird coloration, because I don't see that in the rest of the book. So it's a group of young um, superheroes, and they've gone off kind of on a retreat just to get away from it all. They are mourning the deaths of a group called the Kansas City Jayhawks. Apparently, this is kind of like a, a type of the idea of um, Watchmen or perhaps even The Boys, where there's all these separate groups of superheroes, vigilante type, whatever you want to call them. They've gotten together and they kind of mingle back and forth. So um, this one group, I think it's a group of five here. It's Bugle Boy, Majorette. Uh, Robot Boy, I think is one. Um, anyway, they're going out in the desert. They're just planning to get away from everything for a while. They're going to mourn the death of these Kansas City Jayhawks. O'Reilly is the name of one. He's the only Kansas City Jayhawk that's still alive from that supergroup. He had gone off to get help. They'd sent him off to get help, get reinforcements. And by the time he came back with reinforcements... His fellow superheroes have been killed. So they're off on this, I don't know what this is called, like a, a butte. <laughs> Ain't that a butte? Um, out in the desert somewhere, obviously. And they're having to spend the night out there and talking about things. I can't remember what her name was. Well, they give the name right here. Sunshine. There's Bugle Boy and Majorette. Rivets, the robot kid, and Rally. And they all they're all kind of like sidekicks to a major another um not all of them, but they have like someone else they're associated with. Um like uh I believe Rally is is associated with somebody called I think he's like race runner or something like that. Um so they just kind of talk about um Things while they're where they're cooking some memories. Uh, they're they're just reliving things, just kind of having, just trying to get away from it all. They had just come from kind of a wake type where these all these other superheroes had shown up and pay their respects. 
and then we finally get to a point where there's the funeral and all and then the memories of those that have fallen and we get a little rundown here a kid corsair he's the sidekick of the captain captain crimson in baltimore you know buster who is the junior partner to price fighter in kansas city then teen genie who also perished who is a explorer for dr dudley Kent McHugh of Yale and Kid or Beach Boy who is um al allied to the surf master in San Diego and also Rally who is the apprentice to Road Racer. I'm saying I think I said racer runner or something like that of Indianapolis. So these five had come together and they kind of met in or teamed up in in Kansas City in the middle there. And we get a we get a little show of what their powers are here very quickly. This is kind of a flashback here. And they come up against um, social presidents. They're going to go against what are, they're called, I guess, the White Knights, the Alabama group. Um, you know, Southern Democrats, most likely. And they have an ace in their sleeve. They have a villain, a supervillain with them. It looks like a pimp here. Um, but actually, in the next... Um, Next screen, you see he looks more like um, kind of like a miner or a cowboy or something. So anyway, he's very powerful. They have this major battle between the Kansas City Jayhawks and this guy, and there's a big explosion by the time Rally returns um, with with reinforcements. They are all gone, and they think they've killed. They may have killed this this super villain as well. They're not quite sure. So I don't know if that's going to be part of the story in the future. Um, like I said, this is more of a setup than anything else. There isn't any kind of real big plot points or that I can tell. I did read it twice. and um, But it's got a lot of information in it. It's well written. The art in it's pretty good. The character design, like they said, is by Alex Ross. So you know you put a lot of thought in it. Here's like some close-ups of Rally here. He looks comes like a speed racer type character, and there's Sunshine and Bugle Boy. And they're also discussing that, you know, they're all turning 18 now, and do I want to really be called Bugle Boy anymore, or the robot, Rivets the Robot Kid? Um, and there's a little bit of discussion about Rivets saying, well, you are a robot, you probably won't age like we are. So they're trying to figure out what the next step is in their evolution as a superhero, or whether they want to continue as being superheroes so you get kind of that undertow of the the watchmen where some of those some of those characters grew out of their um their superhero or crime fighting personas when they got older so well it's we'll see what happens in the future um so just kind of like they they the evening's over and they decide to go back um, they pack up camp the next day, and as they're going off, the those that have fallen before them from the Jayhawks, their spirits appear, and they see them off as they fly off to the next adventure, which I'm not sure what's going to be. Now, we go to back to, I'm assuming this is Astro City, and it says, that was then... And we show the Sumerian here. This is the guy from the the original series that had a, a whole set of different superheroes. And he's just watching over things. And these, I don't know if these are actual apparitions that appear to him or what. I'm not sure, but he flies off. And this is the, the group of the four that died in, in the Kansas City um, fight. Uh, Beach Boy, Teen Genie, Kid Course. No, this is Kid Corsair. And I don't remember who that is. I'm already drawing a blank. But then we also get a nice um, realize what, what happened. And we're back. Um, so at first I thought maybe this was a reprint of the original Astro City. It's not. It's, it's a, a new story. Total new story going on. So if you liked Astro City, you'll probably like this. It is pretty much the same team that worked on those original 
um, stories, and those stories are available in graphic novels, according to what is written in all this here. So, um, yeah, check it out if you wish, if it looks good to you. Meet Manny. Does he look like a god to you? This is, I believe, God's on Sunday. This is another Kurt Busiek um, project. Go in here. Get a good look at this this art for this project. Um, another thing for God's on Sunday. Today's a whole different story. The God's on Sunday morning. In the works from Busiak, Anderson, Ross, and Claire, Comic Craft and Image Comics. So it's the same team again for this God's on Sunday. Then we have another Kurt Busiak um, book over here, Autumn Lands. I didn't read this one, so I'm not sure what this is exactly about. But it, look, it appears that it is available in trade paperback now. As is Aerosmith, another Kurt Busiak and Pache Pacheco. So volume one of Aerosmith, I had not read, read this one either, so I can't comment on it other than it looks pretty good. The art looks good. There we go. And don't miss Aerosmith behind enemy lines. And there you have it, an Astro City, a trade paper bag for the Metro book number one. Let's see who worked on it there. Okay. It was an Eisner Award winner for Best Series, Best Single Issue, and Best Writer, and more. So that was way back. The first two years of the Acclaim series in volume, in one volume for the first time. You can see my feet there. All right, so there you have it. Astro City is a recommend. It's not going to be this action-packed thriller, but at least not right yet. But it is a, um, a drama, I would say a superhero drama. In lines along the lines of perhaps Watchmen, that type of, and maybe the boys. Maybe the boys are a little more comical and over the top, so this is a lot less that, but probably not as quite as serious as Watchmen. So thank you for stopping by and watching this review of Astro City Number One. As always, please like, please subscribe if you haven't. Please leave comments, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. This is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.